Today's video will be an examination of the Reading Instant Indicator. Now this is a really cool tool. Uh, this thing will is a, is a headspace gauge. It'll help you size your cases, uh, bump your, your shoulder back properly on, or on all your uh, cases, set your bullet seating depth. Uh, it'll check the uniformity of the bullets that you're using to make sure that they're all uh, the same from base to, of the bullet to the ogive. It'll help you trim your cases uh, uniformly. Uh, it does a bunch of stuff. It, it'll even uh, let you know if your head spacing is set uh, within SAMI standards. So a really cool tool. It does a bunch of stuff. Uh, now I've got head space gauges and I've got bullet comparators, things like that. Uh, that uh, for, like from the Hornady head space gauge and Hornady bullet comparator, that kind of thing. The neat thing about this is it combines all of those functions into one tool. Another difference with this is that it uses the press. Uh, as opposed to just a uh, caliper uh, to do it. Now, I will talk about uh, the advantages of having the uh, uh, using it in a press uh, in a little bit. Now, it's sold by caliber. Uh, this particular one is for uh, 223 Remington. Uh, you can buy it with or without the dial indicator. Uh, the idea being is once you have one and you have a dial indicator, then any additional uh, calibers that you want to get an instant indicator for, you can buy it without the dial indicator and use the dial indicator that you already have. Uh, with the dial indicator, it sells for around $125. Without the dial indicator, it's about $95. So you save $30 bucks, uh, on any additional uh, uh, indicators that you buy um, once you already have your, your dial indicator. Now, they come with all of these parts that you see here. We have the die body, uh, which is just basically a tube that holds all of the other parts. We have the adapter that screws into the top of the die body, and this uh, allows you to connect your, your uh, dial indicator to the uh, uh, device. Uh, you've got a spring that helps uh, give you uniform tension uh, with all of the, uh, the cases or cartridges, things like that, that uh, you're measuring. Uh, there are times when you may not want to use a spring. For example, if you're uh, comparing uh, cartridges that uh, are, have minimal neck tension on the bullet, uh, you may not want to use a spring because the bullet may get pushed down into the case or if it's not crimped or, or something along those lines. So you may or may not want to use the uh, spring and we'll talk about that as we go over each of the different functions. Here we have the inserts uh, that, depending on which set of inserts you put in, uh, determines what the, uh, the indicator will indicate. <laughs> we have the shoulder contactor. It has a, uh, a hole that's set to the datum diameter for, for uh, measuring uh, headspace for, uh, to SAMI specifications. Uh, it has a cap that goes, it screws into the top here of the uh, shoulder indicator. We have the bore gauge, and it basically has a, uh, uh, for this one, I think the bore, the bore size is 0.219 inches, I'm thinking, uh, for 223. Uh, and this would actually go inside of the, the uh, shoulder contactor. And you put the cap back on, and, and you would use that to uh, measure your cartridges and, and uh, check the seating depth on all of your cartridges. Uh, you have a blank, uh, which is used for uh, checking the trim length and, and, so, and uh, uh, bullet uniformity, things like that. So we'll use that uh, for certain things. And then it has a setup gauge. This is set up for, uh, this particular one is 223. It says 223 Remington on the side. Uh, this is set up to, uh, from the base to the datum line on the... Uh, the shoulder here uh, to SAMI minimum uh, so that you can compare your cases to the SAMI minimum um, and get an idea of, of, of uh, exactly how, how much larger or smaller your, your, your head spaces are set to on your cases uh, compared to the SAMI standard.
Now setting up the Reading Instant Indicator is the same regardless of which measurement you're going to take, whether it's head spacing, use it as a bullet comparator, cartridge comparator, etc., uh, etc. Et it's the same for, for all the measurements. Uh, essentially we're going to determine how far down uh, into the press we need to, to screw the die. Now, one thing that I'm going to do, and you may or may not want to do it, this is totally up to you, is I'm going to replace the lock ring that comes with it with a Hornady lock ring. Uh, this is uh, two reasons, actually. Number one, the set screw on the Redding lock ring is a screw that goes directly into the ring and into the threads on your die and I just I just cannot bring myself to to tighten down a set screw that's, that could very well uh, damage the threads on my die so uh, I don't want to do that so I'm going to replace that the second thing that it gives me is the Die ring, the Redding die ring doesn't have any flats on it. The Hornady uh, lock ring uh, has flats on it so that I can use my Hornady uh, die wrench to pop the uh, die in and out. So, you know, this may, may if you're using a Hornady uh, lock and load uh, press, you know, whether it's the single stage or the uh, AP, um, You'll probably want to go ahead and replace it with the uh, with the uh, Hornady lock ring. Now, again, since I'm using a lock and load press, first thing I'm going to do is put my lock and load bushing into the, the the press. One thing: if anybody from Hornady is watching this, guys, put some flats on the sides of these things so I can get it in with a wrench. Uh, it's a pain in the butt having to grab it and try to turn it so it it grab some of the, the lugs on the inside here. Put some flats on the damn things. Okay, next I'm going to put my shell holder into the ram and I'm going to bring it all the way to the top. And then I'll screw the die body for the instant indicator into the press. until it just comes in contact with the shell holder right there and I'm going to lower the ram and I'm going to give it a, about a quarter turn, eighth of a turn just turn it down just a little bit that'll give me the proper depth that I need and then I'm going to tighten the lock ring down on the die body and then tighten the cap screw on the lock ring. The uh, Hornady lock rings, uh, instead of having a, a set screw that goes directly into the threads, it has a gap right here um, that uh, uh, basically when you tighten the cap screw it, it squeezes the, uh, the die instead of uh, uh, using a set screw directly into those threads, which I, like I said, I can't bring myself to do that. Okay. Now, since I use the uh, Hornady locker ring, I can use my Hornady die wrench to quickly pop it in and out and I don't have to adjust it to make that particular adjustment again because I'm using a lock and load system if you've got a press that has just threads in there you're just gonna have you're gonna have to do uh, that particular adjustment every time you uh, every time you want to use the die so that's one of the reasons I like the lock and load system other companies have a, a variation on lock and load uh, Lee and uh, RCBS I believe have a, a similar kind of mechanism so whatever you're using, uh, it, it's it's better to use, to use something that gives you that that ability, as opposed to just having threads in your in your press.
To set the instant indicator up as a headspace gauge, what we'll do is first we'll make sure that the uh, die body is empty. We'll take our shoulder contactor and make sure that it's empty. It doesn't have any, uh, any insert on the inside, the uh, bore guide. We'll put on the cap. And we'll put that into the die body with the opening to the bottom. Next, we'll put the spring in. And we'll put the dial indicator adapter over that. And screw it all the way in. Next, I'm going to take our setup gauge, and I'll put that in the shell holder, and bring the ram all the way to the top. And I'll loosen the lock knob for the dial indicator. Put the dial indicator in, and try to get the arrow pointing kind of in the 12 o'clock position as best as I can here. And I'll tighten the lock knob. Then I'll loosen the dial lock knob. And I'll zero the dial. Okay. Now what that gives me is the indicator set up at zero which will represent the minimum SAMI headspace for 223. Now, the minimum uh, is at zero. The, the maximum is 10 thousandths higher than that. So what we can do now is we can check our cases to make sure they're within the SAMI minimum and maximum. As long as the arrow uh, turns out between zero and 10, that tells us that our our case has a headspace within SAMI standard. So I'll take a, this is a fire form uh, case. Uh, it's a military piece of brass that I fired with my AR-15. Put that in the shell holder and run it up and I see that it's two thousandths over the minimum. And I can check uh, a number of the cases that I fired with my AR this past weekend, two thousandths. Two thousandths. Two thousandths. So it looks like uh, the chamber in my AR is about two thousandths over SAMI minimum. At least that's what my fire form cases are telling me. Now, one thing about fire forming cases, this is once fired brass. Now, the, if, if you have brand new brass or if you have factory brass uh, that's, that's, you know, a factory cartridge that's never been fired, uh, the first time you fire it, it may not expand all the way to the chamber walls. Uh, it may take two, three, or even four firings before it fully expands out to the chamber walls. So, this may be a little bit smaller than my chamber actually is. Uh, what I'll do is the next time I fire it, uh, I'll check it again and see where it's at. And if it goes higher, then I'll, I'll just keep checking it every time I fire this piece of brass until it settles down and stops expanding. Uh, and that'll give me a better idea of, of the actual chamber size uh, of my AR. Now, I got two thousandths over SAMI minimum uh, with the Reading Instant Indicator. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to double check that. I've got my RCBS uh, precision micrometer. I'm going to put that case in the micrometer and see where it comes out to. And it is, well, it's two thousandths over SAMI minimum. 
so kind of a, a double check to make sure that my reading instant indicator is is working properly. Let me take another piece of brass that I just measured. Put that in the RCBS precision micrometer and I get two thousandths over Sammy minimum. So kind of a double check. It's uh, accurately uh, displaying the headspace compared to Sammy minimums. Now if I take say a brand new case, this case is uh, Hornady 223, it's never been fired, it's brand new. We'll see where that uh, where that comes out. Oh, it's right at zero, so Hornady is setting their uh, 220 brass to, uh, or 223 brass to exactly Sammy minimum, it looks like. Let me try another one here. Yep, right at zero. So, uh, the Hornady brass, 223 brass that I bought is, uh, is right at Sammy minimum. That's brand new brass. Uh, now, what can we do with this information? Basically, other than checking to make sure that our headspace is between SAMI minimum and maximum, we can take a fire form case from our uh, rifle and we can find out where the, uh, the, the indicator comes to. In this case, it comes out to two thousandths of an inch. Now, with a bolt action rifle, I may want to bump my uh, shoulder back by two to three thousandths. So I can use the Reading Instant Indicator here uh, to measure or to, to back up my sizing die. I can put my sizing die in, I can adjust it and uh, to bump the shoulder back a little bit then I can use the Reading Instant Indicator to see how far I bump the shoulder back and use it to, to adjust my sizing die to knock it back by two or three uh, uh, thousandths. Now with a bolt action rifle you'd want to go back maybe two or three thousandths. With a semi-auto you'd probably want to bump it back by you know four or five or even six thousandths for semi-auto. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different when you're dealing with a bolt action rifle versus a semi-auto. But that's essentially what the headspace gauge does for us. Checks for semi minimum and maximum and helps us set up our sizing die so we can bump the shoulder back uh, by a couple thousandths uh, once it's been fire formed and that'll help it fit the, the chamber of our rifle a little bit better uh, and give us more consistency, better uh, accuracy or I guess the proper term would be more better precision. Uh, accuracy is, is really kind of a, uh, a function of, of how well we've, we've zeroed our scope whereas precision is uh, how consistent or how small a group we can get, whether or not it hits dead center on the target or not. So a little bit of a difference between accuracy and precision. A bullet comparator is going to help us with uh, seating the bullets in the, ca the uh, cases. Uh, it will also allow us to uh, compare a number of cartridges and make sure that the each uh, cartridge is, has the same uh, bullet uh, seating depth. So we can get a little more consistency out of our cartridges. So uh, to set up for the bullet comparator, I'm going to go ahead and remove the dial indicator. I'm going to remove the adapter for the dial indicator. And I'm going to go ahead and pop the die off of the press. Take out the spring. And take out the shoulder contactor. Going to open the shoulder contactor up, take the cap off, and I'll take my bullet gauge. This has a uh, 
hole diameter of uh, 219 thousandths, which is the uh, basically the size of a bore in a, in a 223. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into the uh, shoulder contactor. It doesn't matter which uh, way I put it in. It's the same diameter on both sides. And then I'll put the cap back on. And I'll put the die back in the press. Put the shoulder contactor back in. Spring. Dial indicator adapter. take my dial indicator just put it on there yeah then what I can do is I can take a cartridge and once I verify that the cartridge overall length is exactly where I want it and a lot of times what the books will give you is from the uh, head to the tip of the bullet so it's not the best way to uh, to measure the overall length of a cartridge um, but a lot of times that's all you got uh, with the books so what uh, the bullet comparator with the Reading Instant Indicator and also say the, the Hornady bullet comparator and any any decent bullet comparator is going to measure it on the uh, from the head of the case to the ogive of the bullet so what I'm going to do is I'll put this cartridge in Bring it up to the top and then what I'll do is I'll adjust my dial indicator up and down here until I get my needle in the 12 o'clock position there. I'll loosen my dial lock knob and zero my dial. Okay, now I'm going to go through, uh, this is a uh, factory ammo here that I have, uh, it's uh, uh, Independence uh, 5.56 uh, military brass, or military cartridges. Uh, let's just go through and see where we come out. This one's uh, a little over a thousandths longer. Uh, about three thousandths longer. Two thousandths. Mm, about one thousandth shorter. So as you can see, uh, you know, these are fairly close, closer than uh, a lot of manufacturers, believe me. But uh, the seating depth on these is just a little bit off. Uh, great for plinking, uh, but not some, not so much for uh, uh, for match grade ammo. I'm going to try a different uh, set. I've got some some Federal XM 193 uh, military brass, and whenever you change batches uh, of bra of uh, cartridges here, uh, you'll want to re-zero your dial. So I'm going to. Get it back to the 12 o'clock position and re zero my dial indicator. Now let's see uh, how this batch does. Now that's about 6,000 short. Wow, that's about 15,000 short. And 4,000 short. So it's kind of all over the place here uh, as far as seating depth. 11,000 short. So again, not uh, not bad for plinking, but 
not something you'd want to take to a match and shoot. So as you can see, we can we can compare cartridges uh, and make sure that the bullet seating depth is the same, or the cartridge overall length basically is the same uh, throughout the the batch. So when you're reloading, you'll take a case or a cartridge that you've got just right uh, based on uh, whatever parameters you're, you're looking for, whether it's just the overall length that's in the book, whether it's uh, you've used the uh, uh, Hornady headspace gauge and actually measured the uh, ch the uh, chamber in your rifle, and you've got the uh, you you set the bullet back a little bit to get some running running start before it hits the uh, uh, rifling in the bore, you know, and you've got it exactly where you want it for that particular rifle. Then you can zero your dial with that particular cartridge and then as you seat uh, bullets in, in your uh, uh, during your reloading session you can compare it to that perfect cartridge and make sure that you're you're getting all of your uh, cartridges exactly the same overall length uh, assuming your uh, uh, you know you've got your uh, your die set up to uh, to seat the bullet that way so that's that's the cartridge comparator or the bullet comparator basically that allows you to uh, uh, set your seating depth and, and make sure that your seating depth is consistent across a batch. Now the case comparator is going to help us with our trim lengths. Uh, to set up for case comparator, I'm going to remove my dial indicator, take off the adapter here, pop spring out, and I'll pop the die out of the press. And I'm going to remove the shoulder contactor. And I'm going to use the blank contactor. So I'll put the blank contactor in the uh, die. It doesn't matter which direction it is. It's the same on both sides. I'll put in my spring. And... Put my adapter on there. Now, this case, there's a couple of ways you can go about doing this. Now, if all you want to do is make sure that your cases are all below the maximum length, uh, what you can do is take a, a case uh, that's a, it's a maximum length. For, the maximum length for a 223 uh, Remington is 1.760 inches. And I've painstakingly collected uh, reference cases for, for uh, each caliber. I have one at the maximum length and I have one at the trim length for 223. This one is a maximum length. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in the shell holder, bring the ram to the top, put my dial indicator back in and get my needle in the 12 o'clock position. Zero my dial, and now I'm set up for measuring cases that are uh, uh, 1.760 inches. Now I can go through a batch of cases, and if any of them are greater than zero, like this one here, it's actually greater than the maximum uh, case length, so uh, I knew I would need to trim this down. Uh, and I can go through my batch of cases and figure out which ones need trimmed and which ones do not. Okay, that one's good. So once I set my dial indicator to the max case length, all I got to do is run them through there. Anybody that comes out greater than zero needs to be trimmed. 
Okay. Now, when I'm doing my match grade stuff, what I'll do is I'll take my reference case that's at the trim length, which is uh, 1.750, and I'll go ahead and zero my dial indicator on that. Oops, wrong case. Bring my needle to 12 o'clock. Zero my dial. And now what I can do is I can check my cases and see where they're at as far as uh, matching the trim length. Now this one is uh, two thousandths off my trim length, so I would want to go back and trim that by 2,000. Uh, and I can basically compare all my cases and make sure that they're all exactly the, the same length. And anybody who's not gets trimmed before I reload them. And when I'm doing my match grade stuff, I'll make sure they all match the trim length. If I'm just doing... Uh, uh, a batch for plinking. I'll just make sure that they're no greater than the maximum case length and go from there. If, they're, if it, I get a negative number, in other words the needle is to the left of zero, uh, as long as it's you know above the 90 and, 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 and below the zero, I know that it's uh, uh, within the trim, between the trim length and the maximum length. So, and I don't really care where it is in there for, for cartridges for plinking. Match grade stuff has to be exact. And that's really all there is to the uh, case comparator. Uh, helps us uh, determine whether or not a case needs to be trimmed. Now, the bullet uniformity gauge, I told you this thing had a, does a bunch of stuff. Uh, this is the last, uh, last thing. The bullet uniformity gauge allows us to uh, determine if the bullets in a particular batch are all the same. It's going to measure the bullets from the base to the ogive of the bullet. Now, uh, we don't have to change anything from the uh, case comparator. We've got the blank uh, contactor on the inside there. Uh, we've got our spring in there. That's all we need. What we're going to do is I'm going to take my setup gauge and put that in the shell holder. And then I'm going to put a bullet in upside down. In other words, with the point down and the base facing up. And I'm going to raise the ram and I'm going to zero my dial indicator, get the needle to 12 o'clock position. Zero the indicator there, the dial. Now, what it's going to do now is compare the rest of the bullets in the batch to the one that I just calibrated the dial to. So I'll take the next bullet, put it in upside down, line it up, and it's within a half a thousandth, pretty close. What you can do now with this is you can separate your, your bullets into different batches that all measure the same. This one's a thousand over. So it gives you the ability to Compare all of your bullets in a particular batch and determine if they're the same. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll I'll separate. Like I've got a, a box of 250 Nosler. Uh, these are uh, 70 grain uh, hollow point boat tail uh, bullets. And what I'll do is I'll separate them into piles. Of, you know that, that all uh, match the same, and then I'll go through those piles. And I'll weigh them and, and separate those piles even further by weight. 
so I end up with uh, a, a batch of bullets that are exactly the same uh, shape and exactly the same weight and that's essentially what the bullet uniform uh, uh, uniformity gauge does for you is, is compare the bullets themselves Now, obviously that's not necessary if all you're going to do is do some plinking, but if you're going to create match grade ammo, that's what you would do. Well, one last thing I wanted to mention about the uh, rating instant indicator. I mentioned at the beginning of this video about the uh, fact that it uses the press. Uh, and it's basically a die uh, rather than just a, a piece of a device that you would attach to a caliper. Um, it has pros and cons to that. The con would be, let's say, if we want, if we're using a single stage press, and I want to uh, set my sizing die. What I'd have to do is put the sizing die in, uh, well, I'd put the, the instant indicator in, determine what the head spacing on my cases are, uh, then I have to put the sizing die in, try to bump the shoulder back a little bit, then I'd have to take that out, put, put the instant indicator back in, and see if I bumped it back uh, the right amount. If not, then I'd have to, to switch dies again and, and do the whole process over again. So that's one of the cons of having the, the instant indicator, the, the bullet comparator and the headspace gauge and whatnot uh, on a die that you use on the press as opposed to just a, a device on a caliper. Now, the pro would be, let's imagine we're using a auto-progressive press now imagine what, how neat it would be if I could take the uh, instant indicator and put it as one of the stations on here. For instance, after my sizing die, if I move my powder measure and my uh, powder cop over one station and I put the Reading instant indicator in here, I could check the trim length on the fly as I'm going through the... Uh, the uh, process with my auto progressive press or I could take my uh, bullet seating die move it over here to station 4 and put ah. my instant indicator in uh, station 5 and, ah. che and check the bullet seating uh, my dog is uh, upset I guess the mail has been delivered uh, I could have the, uh, the cartridge overall length uh, checked uh, on the fly as I'm as I'm loading um, so that, that's kind of a neat idea you know if you want to use it in, in an auto progressive press you could you could use it to check your trim lengths before you uh, prime it and put powder in it or at the very end you could uh, uh, use the bullet comparator and make sure that your uh, cartridge overall length is exactly right uh, right at the end that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. If so, please click the like button. Maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and happy reloading.